welcome to the President's Diary, a weekly program where we highlight the work of His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali. We begin this week with some key points from His Excellency's inaugural address to the 12th Parliament. On Thursday, the President announced the establishment of a One Guyana Commission to foster unity in the development of the country. The essential part of my government vision is inclusion. Stop being defined by race, stop being defined by politics. Start being defined by our one nationality and by our common love for our one country. Let us lift it up together. And by doing so, let us lift each other and ourselves, one people, one nation, one destiny. President Ali said the commission will be spearheaded by Prime Minister Honorable Brigadier Mark Phillips. I propose to give meaning to my call for one Guyana by requesting the leader of government business in the National Assembly, Prime Minister Brigadier the Honorable Mark Phillips, to introduce the adoption of an Act of Parliament establishing a one Guyana Commission which he will head. The head of state said the commission will take into account every voice respecting Guyana's diversity. It will also address religion, employment and education on Guyana's history, among other areas. The purpose of the commission should be to try to do just that in relation to the practical steps we can take to cement our one society, encompassing and respecting the diversity from which our oneness springs. We must move our nation building from abstraction to action and lose not one more moment in doing it. Let us stand up for our one nation, our one Diana. Let us stand up for what we know in our hearts and in our minds to be right. Let us stand up for one identity, the Guyanese identity. Also during his maiden address to parliamentarians, President Ali said his government will be cementing partnerships to guide good governance. This partnership will be forged with all sections of society, including the private sector. I intend also to directly engage communities and community leaders across every village in building trust and deepening relationship to the benefit of the people of those communities. And I propose to do this personally, leading this personally. Every village, every community, we will build trust, we will win hearts, and we will develop in the interest of the people of this country. The president urged ministers of government to have similar engagements. Dr. Ali also gave assurance that the diaspora will not be neglected. It is my intention to enhance the oversight of diaspora affairs so that we can maintain meaningful links to the diaspora and for convening meetings with their organizations. In this connection, we are in the process of establishing a diaspora council to engage the government in a structured and regular manner. Our diaspora is a source of investment, of talent, and of knowledge, all of which can benefit our nation. His Excellency on Sunday, February 7, was made a life member of the Everest Cricket Club. In receiving his membership, President Ali said the Everest Cricket Club has a long history in Guyana. He added that the facility has been a premium one and has been instrumental in sport and other social activities. I'm happy to be, uh, in, to be given this honor of um, life membership in a, in, and I wish the club well. I hope that the management will continue to improve not only the physical conditions of, of, of the club but will also grow the membership and will see the drum being optimally utilized uh, for the benefit of Canada. Club President and Speaker of the National Assembly, Mansour Nadir, said the Head of State has always been up to date with his membership payment. The President of Guyana is always honored with an honorary membership of the Everest Cricket Club. And just when we came in, we'll see the President's picture there. But today, today we are going to be making His Excellency a life member. Meanwhile, Delivering the keynote address at the launch of the inaugural President's Softball Cup at the Everest Cricket Club, His Excellency highlighted the need to decentralize sport from the capital city. The President said systems will be put in place to expose Guyanese from all walks of life to various sporting disciplines. So the first fundamental that we have to fix 
is to ensure we remove the disparity when it comes to sports across the country. We have to invest in the facilities, the programs that will give our young people, our people all across this country, an opportunity to be the best they can be in varying sports programs. He said moving forward, he would like to see opportunities for all Guyanese students. Government has embarked on a program to have multi-purpose sport facilities of international standard in every region, beginning with three in the national budget. It was announced last year that the venues will be built in Regions 2, 6 and 10. The President said there is need to equip the facilities with necessary amenities, including proper lighting to facilitate night competitions. We have immediately embarked on a program to have a multi-purpose sport facility of international standard in every single region beginning with three in, this in, 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 in the budget. We have also commenced discussion on having sports facilities developed in every single region of this country to accommodate even night cricket, night football, night volleyball, night athletics. Efforts will also be placed on developing the human resource capacity in sports. Another initiative is to promote fitness programs in communities. We also have to work on training and developing a core group. And back in the days, we used to call them PE teachers. But not PE teachers, but sports facilitators, coaches and trainers to be attached initially to a district, to a district where we can bring together a number of schools and have them in charge of each district. His Excellency on Tuesday, February 9, underscored the importance of building robust and resilient foundations of development in the region to help countries better respond to natural disasters. The President was at the time delivering the keynote address during the Global Water Partnership Caribbean and the High Level Experts and Leaders Panel on Water and Disasters Virtual Consultation. I believe as a timely and relevant complement to the Sendai framework, these principles have backed by political will, have the potential to help governments and stakeholders to be better prepared to manage water-related disasters during and after the pandemic. It is therefore an indispensable tool for those involved and interested in water-related dis disaster risk reduction. President Ali's address focused on the well-being and empowerment of the citizenry, food security, sovereignty, poverty alleviation, and environmental resilience. The risk from the pandemic, combined with the threats posed by natural disasters, particularly the threat of water-related disasters, have led to the coming of the term twin risk. As we combat the twin risk of natural disasters and the pandemic, we are also obliged to pursue greater resilience we have a responsibility to ensure that every country, every organization, and every family rebounds from the pandemic, even as we protect them from other disasters such as hydro hazards. At the level of policymakers, this responsibility requires making choices. President Ali also used the opportunity to outline his government's comprehensive, inclusive, integrated approach to the pandemic. In terms of managing the pandemic, we appointed a broad-based task force, which included medical personnel, the private sector, and other stakeholders. We've also prepared a vaccine rollout plan as part of the immunization process, which will commence as soon as vaccines are received. Public education is ongoing in this pandemic. I mention these things to emphasize the fact that a model of a multifaceted and integrated approach to the pandemic may be tailored and adjusted for other types of disasters, including water-related disasters. In addition, the country has acquired adequate supplies of personal protective gear, medical equipment such as ventilators and oxygen concentrators, and medications to improve treatment and patient recovery. 
More importantly, the country has provided support to frontline workers and retrofitted a special infectious disease hospital where seriously ill patients are treated. Guyana on Wednesday, February 10, received 3,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine from Barbados to help Guyana's fight against COVID-19. President Ali made the announcement in an official statement. The head of state expressed his thanks to Prime Minister Honorable Mia Motley and by extension the people of Barbados for sharing from their first batch of vaccines. He said this act of kindness is among many in recent months that Guyana and Barbados have shared. President Ali also disclosed that in the coming days and weeks, Guyana will be in receipt of various tranches of vaccines. The president is assuring Guyanese the COVID vaccine is a top priority on his government's agenda. He said the aim is to ensure that every Guyanese is vaccinated before the end of the year. President Ali on Wednesday also called for more collaborative and collective global efforts to help nations secure a better future for their people and the planet. The president was addressing the 20th edition of the World Sustainable Development Summit. The Guyanese leader pointed out that the world is ever-revolving and that concerted actions should be taken to face existing challenges. The time has come for us to redefine our common future, to reform our common values, to address the extant global challenges we face, and to work together to create a better future for our people and planet. The president expressed gratitude to the Energy and Resource Institute for sustaining the forum and assured his audience that Guyana remains committed to its obligations under the Rio Conventions and the Paris Agreement. Over the years, <clears throat> we have demonstrated this commitment in our efforts towards protecting the environment, conserving biodiversity, tackling climate change, and moving the country towards a sustainable development path through our low carbon development strategy. We have been able to protect and maintain forests in an effort to reduce global carbon emissions while deriving payments for forest climate services, which our forests provide to the world. The president said the twin challenges of the global pandemic and natural disasters have reversed in many ways the gains of the developing world in achieving the sustainable development goals. The Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces on February 11 attended the Guyana Defense Force Annual Officers Conference at the National Cultural Center. President Ali, during his feature address, outlined Guyana's defense policy and its four pillars, institution, individual, fortification of national security, and national integration. The conference was held under the theme Enhancing National Security and Development Through Capacity Building, Empowering Troops, and Strengthening Community Relations. We are building a smarter defense force with an emphasis on increased use of technology and intelligence so that, we can, so that we can know what is occurring on our borders and within our territorial sea, an exclusive economic zone. We will be enhancing the capabilities of the force to respond to threats to our territory and to our people, including responses to emergencies and natural disasters. Prime Minister Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, Minister of Home Affairs Robeson Ben, and Chief of Staff of the GDF Godfrey Bess also attended the event. Also on Thursday, in a pre recorded address, the President encouraged the graduating class of President's College to aim for excellence since their generation would help turn Guyana into a modern state. He saluted the achievements of the students whose graduation was postponed from last year and said that their future would be transformational since Guyana is going places and would need highly skilled individuals. His Excellency, during a meeting with members of the Indigenous People's Commission on Friday, reaffirmed his government's commitment to their community. President Ali also stressed that his commitment will be reflected in all government policies, programs and the national budget. The head of state met six commission members at the state house, including the chief executive officer Neil Bacchus, commissioners James Singh, Marco D'Souza, David James and Matilda Williams, and administrative assistant Ron Albert. He also explained that his government has embarked on a national development plan that will promote equitable distribution across all communities. President Ali emphasized that the country's trajectory going forward is aimed in an expanded low-carbon development strategy, which should add benefit and protection to Amerindian communities. 
President Ali's week wrapped up on Saturday with visits to several community centers along the east coast of Demerara. The president on Saturday launched a corridor of unity along the east coast of Demerara. The aim of the initiative is to foster unity among villages between Lusignan and Golden Grove. The pilot project was announced during an outreach to several communities. Dr. Ali said government is committed to not only visiting every community, but also to creating a meaningful environment to bring the country together. The initiative falls under the One Guyana Commission, announced by His Excellency during his inaugural speech to the 12th Parliament. We are going to create this corridor as the corridor of unity, the corridor that will demonstrate to Guyana how communities are going to come together, how communities are going to fuse themselves together and show that we have it in us, we have the ability to create this one Guyana, this one destination for every single one of us. Every President Ali said all must be involved for unity to be accomplished. For too long in our societies, we looked up to a few faces to do this for us. But today, this will be led by you yourselves. This change will be led from the community themselves. That is why I'm here to talk to you directly. President Ali called for meaningful community involvement that will foster change. The president also launched a Republic Unity Cup, also aimed at fostering unity. The Republic Unity Cup will see the villages along the corridor of unity participating in cricket. The president said sports was chosen because it is a vehicle for unity and promotes togetherness. However, President Ali said the Republic Cup is more than just a cricket match. You're not only going to play for a trophy or a cup. You're playing for your communities too. Because under the Minor Works program of the Office of the President, the team that wins, and the, all the teams are winners, but the team that wins, we will be setting aside a special project for that community from which they come. So you're playing for your community. You're not playing for money for a team. You're playing for your community. And this is what we want to achieve as we commence this program of giving meaning to our message of oneness. The Corridor of Unity will create a history that will be the example of national unity and tolerance. President Ali was accompanied by several ministers of government, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Honorable Mahabir Anil Nandlal, Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Honorable Charles Ramson Jr., Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Honorable Hugh Todd, and Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Honorable Susan Rodriguez. This has been the President's Diary where we took a look at His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali's week of activities. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week.